I've got a combat vet, my brother. He's the recent acquirer of a medical card here in the state of North Dakota. And I haven't done one recently from, what do they call it, from seed the soil in a while. So we'll find out uh, what you got to do, how much it costs, you know, why he's doing it instead of why he would use, say, pharmaceutical meds. And we'll talk all about it when we open a big fat bag of cannabis news at 420. So stick around for that. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. And I show him props every Sunday, 417 Main Avenue, Antioch Church, Apostolic Pentecostal Church here in town. 10 a.m. we do a recovery class. If you've got a monkey on your back or you've kicked said monkey off your back and that little banana eater still at your pant leg, we can probably help you out. At recovery, 10 a.m. 11 a.m. worship. I'm on stick duty. Come watch me flail in a controlled manner. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 MIGs of CBD, a locally grown hemp, whipped up in with some other stuff for your outer body. Do your outer body a solid. Black Cottage Alchemy, thank you for sponsoring this show. Again, you're listening to Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 KRWF. Community radio business owners, managers, and nonprofit organizations. You consider advertising? You considering it? Why not learn what underwriting is on a nonprofit community radio station instead? To learn more about what underwriting is, please contact us at our website, www.radiofreefargo.org, or at our profile on Facebook. Why not let listeners know that you support the community by supporting a community radio station like 95.9? Again, we talk about cannabis, the benefits of cannabis, general cannabis news. I got a fun cocaine story we'll talk before 420 uh, i feel like cocaine stories are becoming i don't know the new the new cool thing to talk about i, I feel like it's just they're, they're, it's just saturating our reality like there's just so much coke it has to be in the news i mean i mean ecuador is in this case of bedlam right now because of cocaine and i didn't realize how little of a country that is in between colombia and peru and how much cocaine and bananas come out of there so, anyway, 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. We'll talk about that. We've got, uh, we're going to kind of discuss a little bit, again, what it means to relinquish your gun rights if you, in fact, utilize cannabis medically. And, again, my brother's in here. He's a combat vet. He's utilizing cannabis medically. I mean, and I feel like if he could drive here without hitting anything, he's probably good enough to hold a firearm. You know, if he, if he can manipulate the dog park without wanting to shoot yourself in the face today. He's probably good. You know, so we'll talk about that. Ron DeSantis has kind of a interesting topic, thought, on the Second Amendment. Because, again, at the end of the day, like my brother said, he feels like it's just a scare tactic. I mean, you got the Second Amendment. What are we doing? Inalienable rights? That just doesn't seem like you can tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do if it's in the Constitution. I feel. So we'll talk about that as well. Again, thank you for joining me. Right after me, Stinky Arts Music Mart, mixtape, and then Artemis Blood Shrine. Wraps up your Thursday. Don't forget other days because those days exist too. So again, don't forget KRWF, RadioFreeFargo.org, 95.9. Again, Canada Talking D with Wilson. I'm Wilson. I got my brother in studio today. So we've got a guest. You guys are like, what? Yeah, I know. It's kind of hard to believe. So uh, stick around or leave, but come back at 420, and we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. I'm going to jump into some song here, so, because, I mean, I don't know. What else should I do? I'm going to do that. So, again, I've kind of catered today's music around my brother. So here's brand new P.O.D. I won't bow down. 95.9. And thank you very much, P.O.D. I won't bow down. That's brand new after Veritas here on KRWF 95.9 Radio Free Fargo.org. We're streaming everywhere on this blue and green marble. I want to get into your ear hole. Will you let me? Come on. You can do it. We all can do it. All right. That's enough of that. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Can I talk indeed with Wilson? I'm Wilson. 420. That's where we're pushing towards. And we'll get there. We'll get there. We got stuff to talk about again. I got a guest in studio. My brother's here. Bless his little heart. has got him a little bit of medical card. So we're going to talk about that, see if it's helping him at all. Or if he's just using it, if he just want, you know, he just wants to be stoned. You know, that's probably why he's doing it. You know, he probably just doesn't benefit him at all. He's just probably a dopehead. Well, we'll talk to him and find out. That's probably not the case. You know, and that's just weird how people just, a lot of times, have never even utilized cannabis for any reason. 
And they never really have any sort of verifiable examples for why it's bad, you know, except for the smell, you know. I mean, I get it. But, I mean, again, you can't hide a drunk at the family reunion. You know what's going on. When he starts stumbling over tables and stuff and getting all close to you, holding your arm and spitting on you with, like, BV juice, (laughs) you're going to know that there's an issue. So, I don't know. I got to rambling. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But, boy, I got a fun story for you here. Again, stay with me. 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. But I'm going to break you off a little taster here. High times. Liquid cocaine disguised as white wine seized in Hong Kong. A cocaine trafficking operation discovered by authorities. And again, it's like, what kind of operation are we talking about? Discovered by authorities in Hong Kong, netted two arrests, revealed a particularly creative smuggling method, which we've started to see. I mean, creative is kind of how you got to do it. I don't know anybody who can just walk over the border with a box that says, I've got coke in it. Can I go by? That just doesn't happen, really. I mean, if you ain't creative, you're probably in prison, you know, because you thought, ain't nobody going to look in that. You're an idiot. Don't pass go. We'll see you in prison. Now, if you if you went to creative art school, <laughs> if you're in a, if you're a creative art school, well, you might be able to figure out that you can substitute box wine for liquid cocaine. Sam, you want to t- chime in, do you? Yeah, Sambo Rambo here um, coming at you live. <laughs> You're very live, yes, sir. Man, this is kind of cool. I didn't think I was going to get nervous, but I kind of got a little hand sweat. Going Man, and, and, and acknowledging it is first the battle, because a lot of times people will cancel before they even get in here. And then when they get in here, that pre, that starts to feel a little a little funky for people. And they, Well, they won't acknowledge it, but I'll know. I can tell you know, go ahead. You have a comment, do you? Yeah. I All right, think, shoot. I think if they would have had red wine instead of white wine, they would have gotten away with it. Oh, uh, well, it's a multi-million dollar cocaine smuggling attempt. So we got a lot of a lot of dollars was thwarted. Chinese custom officials discovered the cocaine had been converted into liquid form and disguised as white wine. So then, I don't understand how we're getting back to coke now. I think, you just dehydrate the yeah, liquid? They slowly heat it is what I'm gathering. I, so it's not know. really wine. Like, I couldn't drink it first. No, it's liquid cocaine. You'd probably kill you. Well, and that's what I'm saying. We're talking box wine. So what are we talking, Franzia? <laughs> I mean, because I, I don't want it to accidentally make its way to Bernie's. I mean, I, I just feel like that's the weirdest recall you'd ever have. Oh, man. You know, some, some soccer mom rolls in. Give me that Shanti Blush Franzia. I'm going to have a few friends over. You know, it's... It's district tournaments here in Fargo, and come on in. And next thing you know, you guys shot out your plane gas window. You're like running in circles. They're like, what just happened? Well, you got one of them cocaine boxes. (laughs) Surprise. All right. So, according to the South China Morning Post, two men local to Hong Kong were arrested in connection with a shipping container sent from Brazil. Oh, check this out. They were carrying 706 bottles of red wine, white wine, and juice. So, to your point, they, they covered all their uh, their bases. The container was flagged for inspection at Kwai Chung Custom House compound due to Brazil's status as a high-risk trafficking area based on the frequency of past narcotic seizures. Well, that kind of makes sense. And I feel like that's part of that creative smuggling. I'm going to want to know that. I'm not going to go to that port. I'm going to try to do it some other way. But did the juice and the red wine pass inspection <laughs> so you they know what? only captured the white well that, that's a good question and assistant superintendent jackie chang king bong i'm gonna call her or him later i'm not entirely sure uh of the gender there but uh, hong kong customs and excise department told the south china morning post that the monetary value of the amount of cocaine seized was in the hundreds of millions of dollar range a total of 444 kilograms of suspected liquid cocaine was discovered in 37 boxes the street value was 490 million dollars do you think they inflate those prices to make it look like more like they're doing more work? Well, than they're actually, doing that's crazy. They're packed in thirty-seven boxes. It was supposed to be packaged with four three-liter bags of white wine apiece. So I don't know if they just packed it weird because that's a lot of times what will happen. There's a suspicion to it. The container had been sent by plain clothes with Hong Kong Customs to Wang Long, where they waited for someone to come collect it. When no one did, it was sent to a yard. Where it was placed under 24-hour surveillance, eventually a 50-year-old man turned up to collect the container. He was also later arrested along with his 38-year-old accomplice. So drug tracker, traffickers took every effort and deployed sophisticated methods to conceal the narcotic in an attempt to evade 
inspection. So apparently the large shipment was intended to supply the increased demand for cocaine around the holiday season. Chinese New Year. Hey. <laughs> and for whatever reason, feel compelled to disclose that 2024 is the year of the dragon. Oh, Chase the Dragon. But I thought Chase the Dragon was uh, heroin. But uh, not for nothing, cocaine traffickers appear to be getting much more creative. You're listening to Kind of Talking D with Wilson, by the way. 420, stick with us. Open a big fat bag of cannabis news. We're going to talk to a recent card holder in the North Dakota system. We're going to talk how cannabis, the cannabis has been helping him navigate his PTSD. So stick around. 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. But until then, let me tell you this. Not only has coke been disguised as white wine, but a cursory Google search will show that in recent months, it's also been disguised as pasta noodles, charcoal, almond syrup, bananas, and that's just since last June. Between that, constant barrage of headlines, cocaine washing up on beaches, it would appear that internationally, narcotic agents are playing a very expensive and futile game of whack-a-mole. Whack-a-coke. Whack-a-crack. Crack-a-mole! <laughs> I'm just riffing, folks. Anyway, that was that story. Now, I'm going to read you a little underwriter. Programming on Care Double F 95.9 LPFM is being underwritten by Rough Cut Social. They are Fargo's ultimate entertainment destination for axe throwing. Enjoy fun with families and friends, a stellar team building excursion, or book your party. Rough Cut comes complete with a full beer, wine, and soda bar for your perfect time to get a hatchet in your forehead. They're located at 1100 NP Avenue, Suite 102 in Fargo. Check out roughcutsocial.com for more info. Now the time has come. I'm going to play a song and then. We will be back to talk about cannabis in North Dakota, medical cards, you know, the meds you get for PTSD, and do they work, and is cannabis something that's a viable uh, medicine for PTSD? We'll talk about it on the other side of this. Until then, Newsom, Mike Stern, 95.9. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope everybody is properly, sonically ready. For kind of talking D with Wilson. That's right on the other side of here. That was Newsome. Should be called Soma for as mellow as it may be. But uh, it's all right. It's all right. So hang out. You know it's coming. Uh-oh. What is it? We'll see you on the other side of here. You got a medical card. Go get some ice. Stick it in that cylinder. Gurgle, gurgle, friends. We'll see you on the other side of this. We got my brother, the vet. Going to talk about medical. If you want to know how to get a card, how much it's going to cost, that sort of stuff. Hang out with us. We'll see you on the other side of this. Peace. Hey, it's Phil from Canaheads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. And we're here. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Canatalk ND with Wilson. I'm Wilson. We got in the first chair. What's your name? The Sambo Rambo. The Sambo Rambo. In fact, my younger brother, I'm the oldest, so uh, the smartest, of course. But I always, I'm kind of jealous, you know. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, I kind of wish I had a medical card. Um, I don't even know the process. So let me just ask you this right now. How much did it cost out the door to get medically carded for cannabis in North Dakota? How much did it cost? I, I can't really remember, and I know that's, I can't really remember to be honest, but I think it was twenty five bucks, and they I think they lowered the price from I think fifty before. Only fifty dollars. Well, how much did it cost to see the person? You had to go to a clinic, right? No, that was all uh, through email. So you didn't see a human. I sent them my DDT two fourteen to prove that I was a veteran, right? And then I sent them my medical records from the VA, and they, since the VA won't um, endorse it, right? It's federal. Okay. They, they have to outsource their and they take over as your clinic all right all right cool so so then you didn't see anybody at this clinic no they just sent me paperwork and i'd send it back to them and then it took two to three weeks and i got my card in the well, mail. it's so interesting to me because maybe you would have to pay to get a diagnosis to then get your card but since it, you had documentation to prove because a lot of people think that it costs a whole lot of money, and it might if you don't have any if you don't have anything down on paper that says you need it. Because you have a qualifying condition, PTSD, and that's what you 
went to the VA for initially, right? Correct. And then what do they what do they give you? What do they give you there? What does the pharmaceutical company give you for PTSD? Um, I'm on Vanna flaxine right oh, now and that's for anxiety and that's stuff for depression, depression. and the, the anti-anxiety is a bus bar boost bar yeah yeah, yeah. boost bar and that's the non-narcotic because they won't give us a narcotic mm-hmm. because of addiction and which i understand and then also trazodone i was using for sleep which you uh, mentioned something interesting now that you started utilizing cannabis are you using trazodone to sleep i don't need trazodone to sleep anymore fantastic are you listening to that ladies and gentlemen trazodone is gnarly it's just not a great sleeping pill option. You know, if you can't, if you got to do anything, if you can't sleep and they try to prescribe you trazodone, tell them to hit the bricks, you know, because this is a case in point here. He has trouble sleeping. All right. I can assure you he needs something to shut his brain off a bit so he doesn't have to think about things that you don't have to think about because you didn't go over. Oh, and thanks for your service, by the way, that you didn't have to go over and deal with. You did. So. I always think it's so interesting to me that we're so quick to tell you what you need to be better, but we ain't got nothing to say when you're over there fighting for my freedom, risking your life. You got no family, you got nobody over there. You're just doing it because it's your God-given duty to protect the U.S. of A. You come back and all of a sudden we don't know how, we don't, we don't think you can store your firearm properly. I mean, you are the epitome. Like, if I needed to know how to store my firearm properly, I'd ask a dude that was in the war. I'd ask the Army guy, hey, should you stick your barrel in the mud? Um, Hey, have you ever stuck Tic Tacs in the bullet and shoot mice? <laughs> I was a Marine, by the way. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Marine. My bad. But anyway, so do you think you could properly store a firearm? Yeah, I'm currently doing so now. Okay, so so where where do you think they can get you with that Second Amendment If you have an inalienable right, all right, and we'll talk about DeSantis, and we're going to do that right here. This is Cannabis Moment. DeSantis on federal gun ban for cannabis users. And he quotes, and if you know Ron DeSantis, he is not down. They've had to fight, and they just now have signatures enough to get on the ballot in Florida. But it's interesting to me. There is medical, but this Ron guy, he is is not down with cannabis, sadly. You know, I mean, he's reasonable, and that's what makes this statement here a little more profound. He says... And quote, I don't think that that's constitutional, to be honest with you, on a federal gun ban. He was asked about a federal ban on firearm ownerships by people who use cannabis. Republican presidential hopeful, he says he believes the restriction violates the Second Amendment, attempting to portray himself as a more uncompromising defender of gun rights than the other guy. He goes, I don't think that's constitutional. If you, and, he, and he goes, I have a law degree from Harvard. If you're using a legal product, I don't see how that can nullify a constitutional right. But then we talk about like South Dakota and their quotes. Let's see if I can find it here. Warning, federal law prohibits the possession of a firearm by certain individuals who are users of or addicted to cannabis. Go ahead. But why is it just cannabis and not other pharmaceuticals? See, and, the, and, there, and you know, the Second Amendment says does mention mental illness, but don't they have to make it you illegal? Like, don't they have to charge you of a crime? Yeah, I, and so like I said, um, they wanted to find these medical dispensaries if they didn't put it up there. And then the Senate kills it. Uh, apparently it was unanimous, seven to zero. Uh, she goes, it does nothing but inform the people. So there does seem to be some crazy heavy handedness in it because at the end of the day, we're talking scare tactics, we're talking the Second Amendment, and then we add certain people. Certain means it's not all and why are we warning people about something that's unconstitutional it sounds like it's just scare you're right it's a scare tactic for sure because i always come back to an alienable right but then we start talking about mental illness you know and if anxiety is considered a mental illness well then maybe all of a sudden now you become certain people i think it would be just for somebody that's admitted into a mental hospital or spends overnight care you know what I mean? To where they're not even able to, you know, function in normal society. And then again, that would be obvious. Kind of like that drunk uncle at the party. Exactly. You know, you may not be able to tell right away, but once you do, there's no denying it. So if, if you're unstable, and again, like I said, they, they, like, they like saying, let me get back over here. They like saying, and, and it's always funny how they want to say the Biden people, but they say that. 
you won't be able to properly, and that's kind of their only argument. You wouldn't be able to, they, they claim people high on dope can't store their guns properly. But then again, I always say we like support the troops. I've seen the opposite of that in a lot of cases. We want to tell the troops what's best for them. And what's storing it properly, you know, in a shipping container in the bottom of the ocean. And that's what they want to do is take all the guns away. I suppose, yeah. When, so when you've got that platform to argue, there, there you are. Some people don't think anybody should have guns. I'm thinking I want all the Army guy, Marines to have some boom, boom, bang, bangs in my neighborhood just in case the poop hits the fan. Well, and not too long ago, they wanted to put us in the schools to protect against school shooters. I mean, I think it's probably better than old, you know an old Walmart greeter. You know? Well, what I get, about that one lady? Uh, was it Lewis? She tackled somebody in walmart that was trying to shoplift gail i think gail lewis she's tiktok famous now oh because well she ended up getting fired and so people started a i think a gofundme because she tried to stop a shoplifter okay so let's get back on track yep. trazodone you no longer need because of cannabis now the other things you still take because why why are you why why won't you stop the other ones let's talk about that uh, i'll tell you what they're they're extremely um hard to get off of and they definitely recommend like at least thirty days of slow, you know, of tapering. increments tapering. And I, I, I would just get to a point where I felt like I wasn't in control of myself. Like I, like mentally, I'm like this isn't even me. And so then I would try to just cold turkey it, you know, because that's how I've quit everything, right? You know, in the past, and it was just a, such a mental drain. And I would just have suicidal thoughts. Like I was working alongside the freeway. In St. Louis, and I just, you know, semi trucks weren't even getting over, and it just, you know, all you have to do is just step a little bit over. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, that was just the, you know, evil thoughts, but I just think it was because my brain was not, re it was re trying to rewire itself, you know, and stuff was messed up. Yeah. That is, cr that is, cr that's just a crazy thing. And so you're afraid to get off them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's and they're not really working. They kind of work, right? Well, after i've been on them for so long it just feels like your tolerance just like everything else you know gets to a point where i'm having to supplement something else because i'm still depressed i'm yeah i still have anxiety but now you're scared to stop taking them because of what they've done yeah, in your they've brain given me anxiety. they've rewired your brain yeah yeah see that's the stuff i mean even like with depression you know people would say well i just don't feel at all i just don't feel at all well that i mean is that I, and so i've always seen cannabis users still get their personalities you know some people might say well uncle jim is a little goofy now but he's no longer on oxycontin he's no longer on hydrocodones he he actually smiles and can hang with the nephews and nieces now he can't move around like he used to but his personality's intact he can still live life you know and i remember when i was getting signatures in the mall this i think her name was joanne 80 year old lady one of the first medical card procurers, she come to the mall because now she felt like it. She wanted to get out. She got dressed. She said, when I was taking the other stuff, I snowed over, just laying on the couch, couldn't even get up. And it's like, well, now you still have the same pain. You're still in the same situation. It's just now you're using something that allows you to live. It doesn't wreck you. Yeah, it's, it's given me the ability to enjoy the mundane tasks that I would just ignore because i didn't feel like they were important and then now i mean i'm like i know it sounds silly but hey i'm gonna get up and clean the apartment you know hey i'm gonna hang my clothes up you know that have been in the dryer you know yeah. hey now i got i enjoy my hobbies again you know now i'm starting a little woodworking in the shop and it, it's you know part of me that i haven't had in a long time hmm so so pursuing say a you know kind of like a christian kind of ideology do you think there's room for cannabis in your therapy, right? And making and and being come becoming healthy. Do you think you can become healthy utilizing cannabis, or do you think it's just another vice like booze? Next thing you know, you're going to be say separated from God because you're going to be in a closet just huffing lines of cannabis. <laughs> yeah, I I'm a firm believer that you know alcohol is the worst the worst one out there. One, it's the worst to come off of. Okay, it's number one. They it, it kills more people, and then also is you know, the, you're not in control of yourself when you're drinking, you know. And there's a, there's a point of no return that you don't remember. Oh, yeah. It's like Groundhog's Day. Oh, that, that's where my point is. It, I believe alcohol is the gateway drug. And they've tried to put that 
banner you know on cannabis and they've been wrong ever since day one yeah yeah i mean and that's the thing you start talking about conspiracy like nobody ever wants to believe like it, we lived in like like this reality certainly in the 90s that everybody had our best interest at heart nobody was underhandedness the, uh, our, our food was the best quality of food we could get. It's not like businesses were all money minded and they thought, well, we can cut corners so we can make our bottom line. Meanwhile, you're eating, you know, metallic oatmeal. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, the, you know, the the bad where people thought, you know, cannabis was really bad was during the riots, you know, during, uh, you know, 420 in Harvard, where everybody was rioting against the Vietnam War. Oh. And so they felt like they couldn't control them. If they were, you know, smoking weed, they thought that's was what was causing them to riot. Oh, instead of just difference of opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Freedom and peace is better than bombs and guns. <laughs> well, power is all addictive. the young dudes. Whatever. I, <laughs> I thought we were going to start singing Rooster. Well, I, <laughs> that would make <laughs> more sense. That man. would make more sense because my my statement was a little disturbing. We should have probably went with Rooster. Yeah, but, but we didn't. We didn't. So, uh, so you, so you, so you're seeing positive benefits from cannabis, where pharmaceutically, you're sc- and that's just what trips me out. You're scared to give it up. It don't really help you, but you know you're gonna feel horrible. I mean that. I mean, why? I, I, I just can't see why we're promoting that sort of stuff. And you I, know. And I'd like to just stay, say on the record, you know, I wasn't like a pothead in school. Like I didn't even like it. No, I know you weren't. And. Uh, you know, I w- I'm not saying I never did it because that would be a lie, but, you know, I'd use it, rec- you know, like, let's say at a party or something. Right, right, right. Came Somebody around the said, circle. Hey, yeah, yeah. Smoked this, you know, joint or bowl, you know, and so, and I had a bad, like, I didn't like cannabis because d- I didn't like how it maybe braid the pantry and then just feel like, you know, a, a lazy bum on the couch. Right, right, right. And that is not, like, that stigma isn't even there. Like, I, it's completely different what I thought. Right, you right, know, right. I was going to be like, like yeah, medically using cannabis. Right, so you were surprised that it worked. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's interesting. You got set and setting. You got motive and intention. You know, at a party, you can easily assume that's just a fleeting feeling. You know, that you just—it's just, just all encompassing. Hot chicks smoked a joint, bunch of booze. We're listening to Kid Rock. Who knows? I doubt we're listening to him, but. <laughs> You're listening to him. I'm not. But, ball with the ball. <laughs> the bang it, the bang it, the bang it. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's more like, and so that's the thing. And now my stance, I always say, cannabis is medical whether you treat it recreationally or not. Once you ingest it, it's doing what it does, you know? And so that's kind of the thing. We're talking, well, is there withdrawals? I mean, because cannabis enthusiasts have always argued that there is no withdrawals from cannabis you know there's no tolerance i mean there is tolerance obviously but it seems like if you take tolerance to a a kind of a level where it's just maintaining you i you don't feel the party sensation well that's all i want well, of course it is because medically that's where we want to achieve i don't want those spikes and no, lows i right. want that the even keel all the way all the way through so so you are now in this world of freedom to just so you're having fun trying to figure out what you're even up to that's kind of my you know my con i guess of this is like i'm having to figure out my dosage on my own like it's just by trial and error <laughs> yeah, and that's I, I think that's probably one of the like scariest parts about it it's like, I have no idea if I take a dropper, I'm going to start seeing pink elephants, you know? Which, you know, I mean, isn't horrible, but if you're trying to get to work, it's a problem. Well, yeah, and I just want to go on the record. I don't use uh, while I'm at work. Right. You know, it's just strictly at home, you know, just like if you were taking a medication. Right, and I would argue that, say, maybe a supervisor doesn't want you seeing elephants at work. Because that might kind of keep you from Counter, shingling, maybe. I don't know. Productive, yeah, I would say for sure. It's like I can't shingle <laughs> with all these elephants here, sir. And he's like, "Well, maybe you shouldn't have gotten all medicated, maybe." And that's a good point. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I talked about one time when I came back from Ecuador, and it was like it was like just it, it almost it was too much. And I realized, well, like maybe that's that's what medically beneficial is. There is no spikes. It's just it's soothing your endocannabinoid system and and reducing the anxiety firing that comes oh yeah so your sleep i mean to me that's the biggest thing and now let's talk about this they say you can't dream 
you were saying you've had some crazy vivid dreams. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to Dad the other day, and uh, our brother John was flying the plane. And uh, you might say, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but it was pulling a trailer. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't remember ever seeing a plane pulling a trailer. No. And, I've know, never been up there high enough to see. Man, it was just really far out. And usually another, I never really remember them unless they happen right away before I wake up. And it was just, and I would never dream on Trazodone. Yeah, because that was why you took it. Because you didn't want a dream, right? Right, 100%. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Babies dying. That's not a great dream. No, well, they were more like apocalyptic. Ooh. Like, you know, like China's flying planes over and taking over us. I know it sounds like it's that's news, like today, but that was a while ago. Because, in fact, that's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I, I was know, maybe tell these you, are prophecies. You, yeah, you better hurry up and get home. I was going to tell you, <laughs> China's coming tomorrow. <laughs> 2.30, actually. I, I don't even know why I know this. And then so there would be a war going on and my kids would be like stranded on the other side, like behind enemy lines. And I'd have to go get them and get them to safety. <laughs> so, yeah. So and, and that's so that's the thing. So it's like, well, I mean, Trazodone versus cannabis. How can we how can we say that Trazodone is better? I mean, and again, I'm telling you, people can REM sleep and people that don't even want to dream. I mean, PTSD is the sleeping's the worst for a lot of people. I've heard. So you don't really want to dream. So when it comes to shutting you down and you can dream, but those dreams are flying, pulling trailers instead of like Hiroshima's in your backyard. Yeah. And, you, and it's happening right now, you know, like waking up in sweats and everything. I mean, if cannabis can keep that from happening, full stop, it should be allowed. Well, I think even if that's the only benefit, it's worth it. Exactly. If that's the only benefit. And like I said, a lot of combat vets that I've talked to, they always seem to think like White Widow, the strain White Widow in a concentrate was the most effective for night terror that they had found. And it's interesting that they were specific, but it was White Widow. And I don't even know if it's an indica or what. And it was specifically concentrated. And it would it it was it was amazing. They they always went back to it. Like if they went to a dispensary and didn't have it, they'd want it. And that's another thing with like the illicit market. I mean, there's a thousand strains on the streets. There's three strains at pure three strains of pure Dakota. And that's just that's just the reality. You know, I'm really new to this, you know, and I'm having to try and figure this out. I wonder if there's like information of veterans that have already kind of done the pre-testing and like oh, you know dude, all the trial and error that dude, i'm going yeah through. we have that i'm sure of it we got to figure that out for you kind of talking to you with wilson every thursday i get in here 420 we open a big fat bag of cannabis news and we're up to our nipples in that I got my brother in here the marine suffers from ptsd is utilizing his medical card to get some benefits and uh, we're just kind of discussing the uh, pros and cons and uh if you haven't showed up till now depic or trazodone he's literally does not use in place of cannabis and i can assure you trazodone is worse than cannabis it just is believe us or try it go on a prescript give it a little shoddy shot and then come back and tell me how you like your sleeping experience when you utilize a little cannabis and you have a biscuit before you go to bed and a little squirt of honey in your mouth because you want to because you just want to but anyway kind of talking to you with wilson we about done with this thing uh we got a few more minutes here so I don't know. Let's see what we got here. You yeah, let's, uh, let's brighten the mood a little bit. I, mean, I feel like that was kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's only dark in the realism, in the realism. But it, but the the future is bright. You think for yourself. Well, I I believe, and this is my opinion, that with without God in the center of your life, you might as well just jump off a bridge. I know it sounds horrible, but that's kind of how I feel. Ain't nobody gonna help you like the man upstairs can help you. But. I believe he's provided things that are the least restrictive that benefit people like combat vets who see horrible things and then try to get better. Uh, victims of, you know, incest, all those horrible stressors. It's a plant. It's natural. I have a hard time thinking that Trazodone or Depakote or stinking Wellbutrin or all of those should be used instead of something that's grown up from the ground next to a carrot it, it don't make any sense yes sir yeah and since you know i've been looking up stuff my news feed has kind of been you know things will pop up you know that they think i want to read but it was really interesting it was about i believe the indian culture over in india and they used it for spiritual enlightenment 
You know, so if you're th- talking about God, you know, and cannabis, I know a lot of people are going to be like, no way, that's never going to happen. Well, they say it opens it up and you're cheating. That's what they say. Like if you if you take oh. a mind altering drug, you're cheating into the spirit world. But isn't that the whole thing is to be spiritual? I, I see. And I don't know. And I I have no idea. <laughs> so maybe spiritual and righteousness is, is probably well. Different. I think everybody wants to be spiritual now, and so oh, like yeah, like, so like now my, it's a bad thing. Yeah, now my pastor would probably argue he doesn't want us being all spiritual because there's too many revivals going on. <laughs> I, I have I have no idea, but I like I was telling you today, I've noticed like like mushrooms and a hallucinogenic, which you would definitely trip. Seems even in the medical community and just people in general. They, it's re- they're really accepting of it. I mean, there's legislators that are fighting. Like I said, in, in Delaware, you can grow your own mushrooms now for to like next year, just because he thinks if a vet says he needs it, we should see that he gets it. Well, the, the combat um, doc that was with us over in Fallujah, you know, he's doing the 20th year of Fallujah. I'll just do a plug: 20th year Fallujah reunion whoop, whoop. in Cali. Um, I'm not going for just because I'm I just unstable. You right. know, just to be able to deal with the drinking, I'm, I'm just trying to abstain, so it's difficult to go hang out with Marine Corps buddies if you can get it. Yeah, I get understand. it. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I'm picking up what you're oh, putting Oh, but out. Doc, oh, sorry, the microdosing, you know, I'm talking to him, and he's he's been doing that, and he's it's been helping wonders. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of just amazing, and there's always just been like a stigma, but, I mean, the pharmaceutical companies, they're shady shysters, and it's all about the ultimate dollar, and I mean... I mean, I would I would pee on F- Pfizer's head if he was outside laying down right now. Okay, I wouldn't. That sounds horrible. And I don't even know what he's doing outside, so let's scratch all that. But I'm just saying there should be accountability for that because it, this, the withdrawals of opiates are severe. And I, I can assure you any school of thought on withdrawals with cannabis, and I've kicked Kratom. Everybody knows that. And that was the worst. And I can assure you. Cannabis does not come with that anguish. Period. I kind of have a a little conspiracy. I know it's they're not popular, Um, but Afghanistan was the war was to protect the opioid uh, fields for the pharmaceuticals. Oh, I know oil in Iraq and uh, opiates. Well, I know, like when our brother was in uh, Afghanistan or whatever. Like the base was in the center of the open the poppy field. Yeah, I know. Doesn't that sound suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds. It sounds something. It sounds something. And what's crazy to me too is like Iran, they'll hang somebody for drug trafficking, you know. And yet, I'm sure they're signing off on opiates that come over here. And I would argue that Salmani, Asalama Lake, you big fat terrorist. I'm sure he's probably kind of like a co-conspirator in Xi Jinping's fentanyl takeover operation. You know, because, I mean, come on, fentanyl, where did it come from? I never made it. That's genius, though, for the Chinese to take out the opioids by using a manufacturer. Uh, d- dude, I'm telling you, Art of War, Sun Tzu, don't read it. because it's, it's cause, And then you apply it to China right now, and it'll freak you out. You know, I... Yeah, let's not talk about that anymore. Can I talk a day with Will? So we talk about cannabis, the benefits of cannabis. Thank you, Sambo Rambo, for showing up. I'd I'd say that was a pretty good no I round of discussion. A, it was a great show. Yeah, I absolutely. Like it. And so, thank you for joining us. I'm going to read one of these, and we'll play another song, and then we'll get out of here. Programming on ninety five point nine Radio Free Fargo. Care Double FLP is being underwritten by Drummer's Journey. Drummer's Journey offers percussion instruments, hardware, electronics, accessories, and more. They have a full service for drummers, including repair, custom building, and lessons. Drummer's Journey is located at Highway 10, Small Moorhead. Their hours are Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7. Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 5. Sundays, noon to 5. For more info, check drummersjourney.com. They have a profile on Facebook. All right, Sam, you ready for this? This is four minutes of straight bass. Oh, yeah. You can't yeah. hold no groove. You ain't got no pop. Hey, that was you can't hold no groove if you ain't got no pocket. You're listening to KRWF Radio Free Fargo dot org. Thank you for joining me. I have my brother in here, Sambo Rambo, talking about his medical kind of journey and landing on cannabis. And uh, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious that, uh, pharmaceuticals are no bueno 
Stick with the natural option, especially if it works. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit, and that's a perfect case and point. I worship him every Sunday, 417 Main Avenue, Antioch Church. Come on through. 10 a.m. recovery, 11 a.m. worship. We'd love to see you in the building. I'm about out the door. Educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can educate others on the benefits of cannabis. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 megs of locally grown CBD with colloidal, a bunch of stuff, just to put it on your outer body. Put it on your outer body, would you? All right. Well, I think I'm going to head out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's Can of Talking to you with Wilson. Uh, next week, I'll be back in here all by myself. Or not. You know, we'll see how things play out. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll have a guest. I doubt it. But anyway, I'm out. I'm out. So you guys be good to yourselves. I'll be back in next Thursday. Again, right after me, Stinky Arts Music Mart. Stay tuned for that. I'm out of here. So until then, David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace.